Hey there friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Liz. My company is Hello from Liz Matthews and I am looking forward to spending some time with you today. It is Saturday, November 25th. I'm coming to you one day late. Um, I like to film on Fridays, but hey, it's Saturday, but that is the reality of this week. Um, anybody else feel kind of thrown with the holiday midweek? Anyway, I am here today. I hope that you had a great eight days since my last video. This is Floss Tube episode number 79. I should mention while I'm going through all the details of this video that I will put all of the notes about this episode in the description box below. You don't need to jot anything down or take notes while you're watching this. I will have everything listed and linked for you below. I completely forgot last week when I filmed on Friday that I needed to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I just, it, I think in my mind I'm wishing for more time before all of the holiday events get going. Um, so it just didn't dawn on me that I would not see you before Thanksgiving. But I hope that you had a wonderful day. I hope your bellies were full, that your hearts are full, that you got to relax and do some stitching over um, the long holiday weekend, which we are still in, by the way. I don't know if any of you are Black Friday shoppers. I am not. You will not catch me in a store between now and Christmas on a weekend. I just, I can't, it stresses me out so much. So I like to do my shopping from local stores throughout the week or online. And I hope that you guys had success if that was your thing. I know lots of people look forward to it. So I hope it was good if you did venture out and do some holiday shopping. I have got what feels like a lot of announcements in this video. I've got some whips, I've got some haul, and I'm excited to chat with you today. It's been a really, really exciting week in my membership. There are really exciting things coming up like a jingle ball next week. So I have lots to chat with you about. And as I just mentioned, everything will be linked below if you miss anything. So let me go through and start on my notes. I have um, some Hello from Liz Matthews shop updates. I am running a 20% off sale now through Cyber Monday. So if you're interested in any PDFs of my previously released designs, you can find them in my shop right now for 20% off. I also wanna mention that my mom, Kathy Barrick, is also having a 25% off sale in her Etsy shop right now. I will link them both below. Happy shopping, fill those carts. Um, she has got, I think, all of her latest releases in her shop. So like that North Pole Santa, go get that. He's very handsome. Um, so as I said, linked below, happy shopping. I have, oh, okay. This has been such a fun project that I posted in my membership this week and I cannot wait to share it with you. Um, if you are interested in the Hello from Liz Matthews membership and you like what I'm about to share with you, be sure to subscribe to the All Access membership because I just posted a video tutorial going step by step through how to make these clay cross stitch ornaments. I have been wanting to make these for so long. Let me show you. Can you see that? They are clay ornaments impressed with cross stitch. And this has been on my mind, on my to-do list, in my head for so very long. Um, and I finally brought it to fruition through a step-by-step -step tutorial. And it's there for you to watch now. I was inspired to do this because throughout the year, I have been shown so much kindness. And I wanted to come up with a way that I could give back to people who, you know, made my made my year brighter. And I wanted it to be something small and kind of mailable, <laughs> flat. And this is what I came up with. And it took until the kick in the butt of the holiday season to bring this to life. And they turned out so much cooler than I ever envisioned. So here it is again. Um, this is a clay ornament or tag. And let me show you the full board because I made a bunch of these and you can see how they can be dressed up to become ornaments and um, shared this holiday season. I talk in depth about it in the video in my membership, so I'm not going to talk your ear off about them now, but they are so good. And there are several different designs that I used to create these ornaments and the five little mini motifs 
are available in the membership for you to download and use not only to make these ornaments but in any form that you like they're tiny they are perfect for like any type of ornament so they're there if you like them i really really hope you do because these are super cool and in addition to posting the tutorial for these i'm just going to keep showing these to you because they're so cute i have arranged for a zoom get together i'm calling it a make date and you're invited to zoom with me while i make these this coming week. I, I have so many more I want to make because like I said, I was shown so much kindness this year and it's just a tiny way for me to give back. So that says for a friend and I want to make a whole slew of these. So we're going to do it virtually together and you're invited to join. So head to the Hello from Liz Matthews membership linked below, join all access and um, join me to make these. I love them so much. Thank you for letting me share those with you. They're so is that what I wanted to say? Oh, 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 one more thing. I don't want to say too much about this because it hasn't been shared in the membership yet, but now is a very, very good time to join. Wink, wink, wink. There's something fun and kind of like 12 days of Christmas themed that will be announced in the next day or two. It's one of the videos I have to film today, so it's good. Great time to join. Some jingle ball news. Probably at this point, if you've been watching my videos or um, several other designers in the community's videos, you have heard about the Jingle Ball. It is happening next week. It starts Friday evening. It runs Friday evening through Sunday evening, which means I will possibly, I'm not, I want to, um, I would like to do my normal Friday Floss 2 video, but there is a high likelihood that I will be busy getting ready for Jingle Ball and not be able to do my normal video. So if I'm not here next week, you know why. And I hope that instead of catching me here on YouTube, that you join Jingle Ball and catch me there because I am going to be bouncing all around that event for the three days that it's going on. It's going to be so good. If you're not familiar with what Jingle Ball is, I'm going to link a couple videos below. It's a virtual event that happens next weekend and you are invited to join with this blows my mind so I just need to just chat with you about this for a second I was talking about it on Instagram and it's just so impressive that I have to say it now for ten dollars for a ten dollar general admission ticket to the jingle ball you get so much you got like what is it 24 48 like 62 I don't know hours of entertainment for ten dollars you have access to virtual meet and greets with all 12 designers throughout the weekend you have access to two complimentary I believe it's two classes that you can sign up for included with your ten dollar admission ticket what else do you get okay there are stitching tables there are a lot of really fun ways and I, I don't want to give too much away to virtually connect with stitchers all over the world included make new friends grow your cross stitch circle. Um, there's more that I'm forgetting. There's entertainment videos, like eight plus hours of entertainment videos that we have filmed for you. Um, oh, you have access to all 12 designers plus the Jingle Ball event shopping booths. So you can get exclusive designs from all of us. Everybody has at least one and they're designs that you can't get anywhere else. So, oh, it's so good. $10 hours upon hours upon hours of entertainment it's kind of hard to believe so get your tickets the link is below if you haven't yet you can buy tickets up until the last hour of the jingle ball they do not cut off so you can join the fun at any time what does have a cutoff date of uh, is tomorrow at midnight is any class that is still available now classes are not included with the ten dollar ticket with the exception of the two complimentary ones i mentioned but there are several classes that are still available from my fellow designers and i and those tickets end tomorrow at midnight so if you had your eye on something and it's still available make sure you check out before midnight i think those are all the highlights of what i wanted to mention um except except in 
the list of videos that I'm sitting down to film today, I am also filming my Jingle Ball new release video. It will be posted on my channel Sunday. And if you would like to get it in newsletter form, which includes a list of all the called for materials for my five new releases for the Jingle Ball, then be sure you subscribe to my newsletter. You have a choice between just watching the video and hearing me talk about the new designs or getting the newsletter, which will include a link to the video and a list of everything I used to create these five new designs so that you can go to your favorite shops and start kidding now ahead of the Jingle Ball. Okay, all the details about my new releases will be in that video. Um, so look for that to be posted on Sunday. And don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter linked below. Alright, let's talk cross stitch. Those are all of the things that I wanted to quick check off the list for you. It is a busy time of year. And I don't want you to miss anything because I didn't share the news with you. Sometimes I feel bad that I'm just like information, information, information. But it's information that I would be sharing with my very best friends, so I want to make sure I share it with you. Speaking of very best friends, my friend Annie has turned into a avid cross-stitcher. She is making so many beautiful things, and she and I took a trip to our LNS on Wednesday. We had a great day. We went to the LNS, we did a little lunch date, and then we did some antique shopping, and um, she kindly gifted me this book that I have been forgetting to show you for the last couple weeks. Annie was abroad in England um, earlier this month and she did a little shopping at a local Bristol bookshop and she found this book and she brought it back for me which was so cool. It is called Needle Making by John G. Rollins and it is all about the history of making needles. Have you ever seen that? I had no idea this book existed, but how specific, it, like, I think it's so cool that something so specific exists and that now I get to learn and read about it because without a needle, we would not be happy cross-stitchers. So there's great images in here, the history of needle making. Like, I think it's really, really interesting. and I can't wait to read through this book when I have a free minute and imagine all the stuff I'm gonna learn. I mean, really, tools of our trade and we, obviously we wouldn't be cross-stitchers without them. So thank you, Annie. I will um, enjoy this very much and I will let you know how this book reads as I have a chance to get into it, but I think it's gonna be really, really interesting. I'm going to save the rest of my haul from our trip to the stitching post until after I chat with you about my whips and some happy mail I've received because I think it will make a little bit more sense with that context. So stay tuned for that. I also wanted to thank you all so much for all of the comments and um, encouragement on my little impromptu video I posted last Sunday when I got those three kits in the mail. I received the kits from 123 Stitch. I thought, oh, these are going to be really interesting to open and I'm sure that I'm going to have a lot of thoughts and I really wanted to capture them on video, which is how I ended up filming that unboxing for you. and. You guys answered so many questions I had, particularly about the yarn in the Dimensions kit. When I read further, I did discover the yarn that was included in each bundle identified which bundle it was. So thank you for everybody who um, maybe enabled me a little bit more, sent me links to other Dimensions uh, kit parades. I love them all. The rabbit hole has only gotten deeper, as you'll see in just a bit. But thank you. That video video was so fun, and I wasn't sure how it was going to go over, but I think it was a hit. So I appreciate you letting me do that. So I have um, an almost FFO, no, an almost finished stitching piece. Um, you know that I had been working on the Dimensions ornaments. This is Christmas Village ornaments and I have been working on the tree farm. 
it was my most favorite ornament from this set of six and I got the stitching done with the exception of the magic back stitch. I wanted to wait and share this with you before all the back stitching went in because I think it will be completely transformed. I made this board too big. I need to make a smaller board, but here is the um, both cross stitching and half stitching finish of this piece. I think that is so pretty. The way Dimensions does lighting, and I've heard many people say this in Dimension um, kit parades and whip parades, the light that they capture in their designs is so good. And oftentimes I am surprised by the colors that I'm using, but then they come together so beautifully. This barn looks backlit with like the glow of a winter twilight shining through. It's so good. So my plan now is to press this and then put it in a hoop because I like doing all of my fancy stitches and I do include back stitching and straight stitching as a fancy stitch in a hoop with a little bit of um, would that be tension stretch tight so that's my plan and hopefully by next weekend although this is a monstrously busy week coming up hopefully by my next video I will have all of the back stitching in and I will be ready to transform this into an ornament by the way this will be my second ornament that I need to FFO. So I'm thinking that we should probably have a finishing day together. I mentioned that before and some of you said yes. So I'll get working on that after the Jingle Ball um, and we'll plan for that, but oh, I love this. So this had a lot of new things for me. It had a lot of half stitching, which I've never done before. And there were so many times that my needle just made the full stitch instead of the half. And that was very frustrating, but I would go back and remove the top leg of my stitch. But what you're gonna see is, although it's not exactly what was called for on the chart, I ended up doing all of the foreground, meaning the ground, the trees, the barn in full stitches. And I did the sky in half stitches. I did not follow the dimensions chart when it would call for maybe like four strands for the half stitches. I was like, no way, no way, no way. I kind of wish I had now because I think it would have filled in a little better. So um, this was a great practice piece for me before I dive into some of my bigger kits to trust dimensions they know what they're doing now i did change the size of my fabric from a 16 count to an 18 count because that's what i like so a little adjustment needs to happen but this was a great learning experience um let me show you again up close with so i'm going to show you again up close now that you have the knowledge of what i did and you can peek for that the sky is just meant to be a little bit lighter in coverage Man, I love that so much. So that is where I am with that. Yeah, I learned a lot. And this was a great little piece to learn on. So from here, I think not immediately, but for next Christmas, I'm going to do another ornament. And I originally thought I was going to do probably this blue house. But I was looking at this and then I saw the bakery that has a chocolate chip cookie sign. And now I am all about the bakery. There is a storefront window with cakes and pies in there. And that's just where I'm gonna go next. It is the bottom middle pattern. Do you love it? I love it. So that's where I plan to go from here. And that um, is really all of the stitching that I have gotten done this week. I do have what I would consider another whip because it's taken quite a bit of time um, in preparation this week. So I'm going to include this next piece in my whip section and it is, I have the squeakiest stool, don't mind that. Um, it is Christmas Cove, which is a 
out of print chart that I got on eBay and I am obsessed. Hopefully that helps. Um, it's all I could hear after I pointed it out to you. This is Christmas Co. And it's going to be my first dimensions, like big needlework piece start. I love it so much. It's hard to find. And when you do find it, you are paying a pretty penny. There are some on eBay right now, but I want to say they're nearly $200, which is not what I paid, but they're pricey. I justified the price I paid by realizing this is probably at least a year's worth of stitching joy for me. And I, I did it. I bought it. I talked about it in that kit unboxing video I posted, that special edition video. If you want to hear more, go watch that. But I really had to spend a lot of time sorting and organizing the thread. So I'm going to call this part of my whipped because I spent probably two, a, an hour or two, probably two hours, one evening getting all of the threads sorted. They came uncarded. They were just basically a bundle and I had to sort them out, which I did. And I ultimately decided at this point to put them on little square tags. These are something I had printed for my business previously and I had remnants. So I took this square and I punched two holes with, you know, like a hand punch. And then on each piece labeled the color. Here's a fun twist that I'm not really loving. Um, dimension kits of this era, 1996 is the era I'm talking about. The thread list this is so strange to me where is it the thread list is like yellow dark blue it has a symbol and then a name but these threads don't have they aren't identified by number which is very strange i guess it's more like using like a week style works or what other thread companies have names rather than numbers that is primarily used? I don't know. It's just makes me feel like when I go to pull threads, it's going to be a little more time consuming than I'm used to. And of course, because this is a dimensions kit, there are um, blends and you can see it says use three strands for the following of the following colors. Use three strands, use two strands for half stitches. There's a lot of things that I'm not used to, but by the time I get into this, I will be very used to it. So I don't know. It's just, it's unusual to me not to be writing a number down. And then I thought, okay, well, great. I will also write the symbol on each of these tags so that I don't have to look at that at all. I just pick the symbol. But in many cases, this color, for example, taupe is used alone as a single color with one symbol. And then it also might be used in a blend, which has another symbol. So I would have to put several symbols on here when I'm ready to use it. And I might end up doing that, but for now I'm leaving it alone until I dive in to the actual stitching process. So I don't know, maybe that had like 60 threads. I have quite a lot. So I carded all of them. And then I also spent a lot of time. Um, I don't have it in front of me. Let me, let me get it because it will make a little more sense. I spent a lot of time working with the pattern. I, I have now put the pattern in this retired, hard to get, very expensive chart in a plastic bag so that I don't need to use it again because I have made working copies with it. So here's the pattern. It's one massive chart. Like there is no way I am using highlighters on this to mark my progress, which is how I stitch these. So I spent a lot of time making working copies on my, um, my printer downstairs blowing it up 
and taping things together and getting this to a working copy stage. Uh, it's probably, probably 20 sheets and I'm not sure how that's gonna go, but I, you know, it's not like I'm gonna cruise through this whole section quickly. So, I don't know. I just definitely feel like that time needs to be noted in my whip process for Christmas Cove. So, I will continue to learn and figure out how to manage these kind of style kits as I do more. Not that all of the kits I got are this style because this is an extremely old and maybe more rare in its form kit. So I don't know. I'll figure it out. And I just appreciate you letting me verbally work through these pieces with you. Um, I am so excited to start this. I don't know when it's going to be because they're not the kind of things you like quick put put a thread length into. They're kind of intense. So this is my next start date TBD, but I have gotten myself to a pretty ready position. So let me put this all away. Like after all that work, it needs to be put away correctly. Along with all of my working copies and the threads, I am also going to be putting in my, um, little project bag, some of the fabric that I picked up at my LNS. So I have a very small amount of haul to share with you. And all of this haul is because I am choosing to switch the fabric that's included in all of the kits that I purchased, that I'm about to show you more of, um, to linen because I am a linen stitcher versus an Ada stitcher and Ada is always what is included in these kits and I just wanted to switch it up a little bit. So I brought this piece of fabric that came, sorry, that came in Christmas Cove kit. I brought this with me to my LNS hoping to find something and I wasn't able to find anything spot on identical but I found something that's really close and I have something on order from Lindy Stitches. So what I did find is 36 count Fox and Rabbit Ocean Air fabric. That's pretty similar. Now, not a lot of fabric shows through in these pieces that I plan on stitching, but in some cases, a little bit does. It's likely the, a portion of the sky. So I did wanna get something similar, and I think this is a good alternative. I almost bought, I almost bought the full yard of this that was available at my LNS and thought I'm gonna switch all of them to that. And while I still might do that, Annie talked a little sense into me and said, why don't you try enough, why don't you start with enough linen for one piece? See how it stitches up, if you like how it feels, and then you can go back for more or you can find something different. So that is what I did. I bought enough of the Fox and Rabbit linen to substitute um, the fabric for Christmas Cove, and I'm gonna get it started on this whenever that happens, but it's a pretty, pretty similar match. That's good, right? I am going from a 16 count Ada to a, an 18 count linen. So that is my only, um, I don't know. I don't want to say concern. It's not a concern, but uh, Bernadette of Burn Stitches reached out to me and said, just be aware that sometimes Dimensions calls for a lot of thread thickness. So um, I'm gonna ask her her opinion, I think. But that is what I substituted for. I think it's a really good color match. And another piece I have on its way to me from Lindy Stitches is a piece of smoky blue. I believe that's what it's called. Sm smoky blue 36 count Swigert linen. And I have enough to replace another piece of Ada in another chart. So I'm going to really get my feel, get a feel, do some sampling, get a variety of fabrics to try out in these kits. I will let you know as time goes on what my report is. But I'm really happy to have everything I need to start stitching Christmas Cove. 
I also picked up a piece of navy Zweigert. This is 32. Crud. I meant to get 36. I actually think this might be 36. All right, I'm going to have to do a test strip. Um, this is just navy. Whew, getting blown out. Navy fabric from Zweigert. Dark navy. That, yeah, I think that's 36. Looks it. That's what I thought I got. So I got it for, oh, sorry, I'm shaking you. My setup is a little bit different. Um, I'm sorry if I'm shaking the camera a little bit. I got it for a piece of my happy mail, which is the last little section of things I want to chat with you about. Um, I got some things in the mail. The ordering continued. Sorry, I'm shaking you more. The ordering continued. Uh, so I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I wanted to show you. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. This is a purchase I made on eBay. Very, very uh, reasonably priced. These bags, these vinyl front zipper project bags that I got on Amazon, they're good. I like the size, but the zippers, mm, not so good. Doesn't matter. This is what I purchased. And when I was talking to you earlier about dimension doing lighting very well, this is a good example. This is Woodland Glow. And here it is. Sorry. Did I open this? I did. I think this is just so very pretty. Look at that. Look at the lighting coming from that tree with the woodland animals all around. I think this is stunning and it is done on a piece of navy linen. So, excuse me, it's recommended to be stitched on a piece of navy Ada, which is what I will be replacing with my navy linen. So. You can see in this case, the navy does show through a little bit behind the trees on the back. That is so, so pretty. Just, just calls, calls my name, draws me in. I love a winter scene and I'm gonna put this away with that now. I have, what else do I have? What haven't I shown you? I show you this? I think I showed you this. Forgetting. Winter Celebration by Dimensions. Also out of print. Continuing with the winter theme. Love it. And oh, okay. Kia messaged me on, I think it was before Thanksgiving because apparently now Black Friday sales or Black Friday week sales, which I'm not really mad about. Um, but she messaged me and said, Dimensions sa Dimension kits are on sale on Amazon. Okay, it's all coming back to me. And I said, okay, I'll go look. And I may or may not have found this piece. This is not a winter scene, which is kind of, oh, there goes the needle, which is kind of abnormal for me, but I think it's so pretty. It reminds me of little shops I have seen all over Europe and it just, I don't know, brought back memories. And those are the kind of things I like to stitch. So this is actually a, I guess, spring summer scene. It's called Bloom's Flower Shop. And my plan is to translate the aqua striped overhang on this piece to be a black and white striped overhang because that's more what I remember seeing. But there it is. I will substitute the fabric on this from white Ada to probably an over dyed linen that I have in stash. It's one of the few pieces that I'm really well, maybe it's the only piece that I'm veering off course from what Dimensions includes or recommends. So I got that. 
Um, this was $20 on Amazon. $20. Go get yourself one. I'm sure those sales are still going on. Um, it is Holiday Village and it is an absolute classic. And now it's mine. I love it. I love it so much. So listen, it's a lot. It's a lot that I have purchased. It's a lot of stitching. It's enough stitching to last a lifetime. But I have embraced the whole stashing as a hobby and stitching as a hobby. They do not need to be intermingled. So they're making me really, really happy, especially when I get them on sale. And I'm gonna continue to stash them. I hope that you continue to tune in to see what I get and don't think I'm crazy. And just let me share the things I like with you. I appreciate it so much. Maybe, maybe I can encourage you to <laughs> going on this rabbit hole with me as I mentioned before because I just want everybody to feel as excited and energized and happy about the stitching I've chosen as I hope you feel as excited about the stitching you've chosen as I do about the stitching I've chosen is what I'm trying to say so Okay, that is all I have for you today. Don't forget to check out my video on Sunday going over my new releases for the Jingle Ball. It's going to be a really, really exciting week coming up. I hope I see you at the Jingle Ball. Let me know if you have any questions. Check the description box below for the links to everything. Um, I guess that's it for me. Over and out. Take care. Have a good weekend.